My name is Robert. I work for Dry Ease Products. I would encourage you to always set this up in an area where you're getting free airflow and where your exhaust is carried off. If you're at altitudes, there are directions in the manual for setting air intake to the burner. I would encourage you to every day inspect this unit at least once. In operation, if you've got black smoke, you either do not have enough air or it needs to be tuned up. Number two, if you've got white smoke, that's an indication that you've either got water in the fuel or too much air. And you should have clear, lazy fingers coming out of this exhaust stack. It's essential to pay attention to it because if it gets fouled up, the heat exchanger can get plugged up. I would encourage you to pay particular attention to your fuel. When you're not using it, I encourage you to either totally empty the tank or to keep the tank full. For now, we'll pull off the top and I'll talk to you about uh, the tune-up that's necessary, the maintenance that's necessary on these units. There are safeties built into this uh, to help prevent, you know, fire or tragedies. It's important that when you turn it off, you turn it off at the switch and you allow power to remain to the unit so that the blower can come on to cool the, the heat exchanger down. If it does shut down for whatever reason, you might get a blinking red light, you might get no light at all, you might get a solid red light. The control system here has a little red button that has to be pushed. Uh, if it's a blinking red light, then it has to be held for 20 seconds. If it's a solid red light, I hold it for a minute. There is an access door in the cover that you can reach in there and depress the button. We're going to do the procedure for doing the tune-up. You need to remove the igniter and the bracket that holds the photo eye. Inspect the photo eye, make sure that it's clean. Then at that point you're going to have a zip tie you're going to need to cut on the fuel supply line. You're going to take a pair of channel locks to remove the uh, holding nut on the fuel line that goes into the uh, cannon. And you remove the nozzle assembly. It's very important when you're handling this, you want to treat the, um, the electrodes with care. There's a ceramic cover on them. If you see any tracking on this, then they'll need to be replaced. You want to inspect them, make sure that they're a good sharp uh, point on them. They're, the dimensions for the setting them, both the width and the length from the nozzle, are in the manual. You're going to remove the, uh, the ignition points here. So this is the nozzle assembly. Again, we want to clean this diffuser plate and then we're going to replace the nozzle. So we're going to have to remove this holder for the diffuser plate in order to get to the nozzle. Then you're going to need a three-quarter inch open-ended wrench and you're going to need a 16 millimeter wrench in order to remove the nozzle. You need the three-quarter inch as a back backup um, and you want to treat this easily like I said gingerly so that you don't destroy the uh, electrodes. This is a nozzle. It's a 70B, which you can purchase from us. It's important that you use the same size, the proper nozzle, to go in here. There is a filter on the end of this. Once these get plugged up, there is no way that you can clean them. They need to be replaced. In order to clean this diffuser plate, you can use a wire brush and you can sprinkle some diesel on here or WD-40. Any type of uh, oil will help you get the uh, debris off of here, the soot that's built up on here. Uh, and you need to get it clean and then put it back. It's very important to keep these slots open so that air passes through them and diffuses the mist 
um, so that it, you get a ball of flame and not a solid flame. Slide it back on. Make sure that it's good and clean. Cinch it up and then we'll insert it back in the uh, bur barrel. We put the ignition hookup back on the fuel tube. We need to zip tie it. And you zip tie it in two places. Try and get it back pretty close to where it was when you took it loose or cut it. You have to put the cinch nut back on. You want to snug it up good and tight. Check to make sure that it's not moving around in the barrel. And then you want to hook your fuel line back up. You want to get it good and snug, but you don't want to over tighten it or you'll crack the copper. From here, you're going to put the igniter back on. From here, we'll move to the other side of the unit. We'll change the uh, fuel filter. And I honestly recommend that you always have an extra filter on hand. Uh, just in case they get plugged up. They literally can get plugged up with water. So number one, there's a set screw on top of this. It's designed to keep the filter from backing off the unit is what it is. And you have to back it out of there and then set it down there and it'll keep the filter from twisting. This one is grease, so I don't need to put any diesel on top of it. But if there's no grease on the top of the filter that you get from, I recommend that you put a little diesel on there before you screw it back up. It's best to do this. You set it up there, put some pressure on the bottom of the filter, just gently start to rotate it, and you'll feel it take off. Snug it good and tight. Put the screw back in it so that the filter won't back off of there when it's vibrating. It should be ready to put the top back on it. It's very important to start these by hand and run them in a couple of threads before you do anything else. And try and get them all in before you do any tightening. It's important not to over tighten these. You want them good and snug, but you don't want to over tighten them and risk stripping them out. You probably want to put the weather shield back on. Uh, it will keep moisture from being sucked in there. It's important to have the chimney on when you're firing the unit up. It kicks the fumes out or the exhaust out much higher. There's not a chance of the unit picking up the exhaust and blowing it into the house. Now that we finished the, uh, the tune-up, we brought it outside so that we can fire it up. I had the rain cap off of here because I'm hoping that you'll be able to see the clear lazy fingers coming out of the stack as long as the unit is good. So I'll turn it on and we'll see what happens. This is actually really good. We've got pretty clear fingers. There you go, happy drying.